The studio say that you are a very organized person, very spontaneous person, or how would you say? No, myself as an artist, I'm just a musical prostitute, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Mercury lived a crazy life filled with amazing and jaw-dropping moments. Through all his ups and downs, Freddie always managed to inspire crowds with his lyrics, electrify audiences with his performances, and amaze listeners with his one-of-a-kind singing. Today, we're looking at the top 10 moments in Freddie Mercury's career. Number 10, Freddie on SNL. Freddie and the rest of Queen made it onto season eight of SNL, an important moment for him and for the band. But there's so much more than meets the eye. The night before the show, Freddie threw out his voice during an argument with his partner at the time, Bill Reed. Instead of socializing and networking, Freddie spent the day trying to get his voice back in shape for the performance. Miraculously, he managed to pull through and he played a great set. On top of overcoming physical hardships for the show, this performance was Queen's only set on American TV, as well as Freddie's last performance in the US. Number nine, the Darth Vader moment. Freddie might have said that he didn't like Star Wars, but after this classic moment, it's pretty clear he was a fan. During a show in the self-proclaimed weird city of Houston, Texas on Austin 10th, 1980, Freddie brought the weird himself when he went back on stage riding on the back of a man dressed as Darth Vader. Instead of David Prowse, Freddie simply asked a security guard named Wally Verson to play the part. Freddie revisited the Darth Vader entrance during the 1980 tour, but this first time was priceless. Eventually, George Lucas got upset at Freddie and he had to stop writing on Darth Vader. Number eight, Gary Newman, Fast Food, and a Limo. Fellow musician, singer, songwriter, and producer Gary Newman was also a huge fan of Queen, and he and Freddie had a unique moment that's one for the history books. Newman was touring in Japan at the same time as Queen, and he decided to go to see Freddie and the rest of Queen. However, Newman underestimated his popularity and got swamped by fans in the audience of Queen's show. Queen's security crew was on it. They pulled him to safety, and backstage Queen invited him for sushi after the show. He said he'd go for some McDonald's later, but Freddie pulled through and ordered him some fast food and had it delivered to the sushi restaurant via limousine. Number seven, Don't Stop Me Now at the Hammersmith Odeon. This wonderful moment was back in 1979 and Freddie was magical at the Odeon. Not only was this a phenomenal show, but it was capped off by this wonderful moment by Freddie. His red leather pants dazzled the audience and his performance lit up the stage. His energy was boundless, his bottomless mic firmly in his hands. He was truly having a good time and no one could stop him. Number six, Radio Gaga. Freddie and Queen played one of their most memorable shows at Neeworth Park in 1986. It was August 9th and over 120,000 were in attendance. Freddie's performance was everything fans had come to expect, but it lives on in memory because this was Freddie's last show. Radio Gaga wasn't their biggest hit, but it's what we have to remember him by. It was a legendary performance and one fans will never forget. Number five, announcing his AIDS diagnosis. It's hard to place this one. On one hand, Freddie's admission of his health crisis shows strength and courage, but on the other, he might have only opened up out of pressure. Freddie was diagnosed back in 1987, four years before he would succumb to the illness. Freddie confided in Mary Austin, his partner Jim Hutton, and his bandmates, but everyone else was left in the dark. Fans caught on that something was wrong, but Freddie wouldn't talk about it. He kept working with Queen and pushed through, but by November, he stopped taking his medication and finally told the world he was battling AIDS. It took a lot of courage to issue a press release of this magnitude. Freddie would die the next day, making this an incredibly bitter moment, but a glimmer of personal growth right at the end as Freddie confronted his condition and opened himself up to the world one last time. Number four, the 1990 Brit Awards. Queen had eased off touring after Freddie was diagnosed with AIDS, but they were still a musical powerhouse. Queen accepted an award for outstanding contribution to music, an award that was all facts and a great testament to all Queen has accomplished. This was Freddie's first stage appearance since his diagnosis. He was visibly weak, but he showed up anyway. He knew what the award meant for him, 
for his friends and band members, and for fans. He was dressed in his usual lavish yet punk attire, but he wasn't dancing and singing this time. Instead, Brian May spoke for most of the acceptance speech, but Freddie gave us a heartfelt and tear-jerking thank you, good night. Number three, the show must go on. Some of Freddie's best moments happen behind closed doors. While we can't witness his take on this song, we still have an immortalized moment that's definitely one of Freddie's best. The concept of this song embodies most of Freddie's life. Through all his ups and downs, through the hate he got for his act and his sexuality, through his lost love, through his AIDS diagnosis, he always kept on striving. When it came time to record the song that sums up his personal mantra, Freddie was already nearing the end. Brian May was worried the song's melody might be too hard on Freddie, and he wasn't sure how that would impact his emotional state. Freddie pulled through to sing the final track of the last album released during his lifetime. He got up, drank some vodka, and sang the recording vocals in a single take. Talk about skill. Number two, Under Pressure. The story of the song is a series of moments that makes up some of the fondest memories we have of Queen's frontman and fellow music legend David Bowie. The song started organically, with Bowie and Mercury ending up in the same studio by chance. Partying ensued, and Freddie delivered some of his best vocals, along with a message that has resonated with fans to this very day. Bowie was a perfect duet partner for Mercury, with their overlapping personal lives and public images, and their vocals meshed wonderfully. The writing and recording were all spur of the moment and uncharted territory for Queen, yet they came through with a track that was more than experimental. It was a number one hit that endures to this very day. Number one, Live Aid. So much has been said about Queen's Live Aid show, and for good reason. Although Freddie didn't want to join the video because he was worried it would be seen as a political move, he changed his mind as he saw the set list grow. He wanted to show his skills not just to the world, but also to fellow musicians, and he exceeded everyone's wildest expectations, blowing fans and fellow performers away and stealing the show. This was 20 straight minutes of Freddy at his finest, with his captivating stage performance and unmatched vocals. Live Aid was not only Freddy's best live performance, but it's Freddie Mercury's best and most beloved moment. There are so many great moments that Freddie Mercury gave us throughout his lifetime. It's hard to pick just 10. Did your favorite Freddie Mercury moment make it to the list? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you next time.